Hello one and all, I haven't done a speaking uh, vlog entry for a while because I've been a bit insecure about my uh, microphone situation I, I wasn't enjoying the onboard mic on the laptop or the webcam um, but I have now invested in a dedicated microphone so I'm a bit happier with that um, might be a few posts this week. I know I'm doing a bit of a catch up chat with one of my agency colleagues um, at some point tomorrow, being Tuesday. So that should be on towards Wednesday, Thursday. Um, also, I want to do a post where I talk about a few uh, experiences and a bit of advice I've got coming off the last few weeks of shooting. And um, today's post is about the Women's Super League. Uh, so it's something I've spoke about before, I'm a massive fan of, obviously there's a lot going on this summer that I, I've talked about in a previous vlog post in terms of the Sky BBC takeover and uh, this weekend just gone was the end of the WSL season for this year, uh, it was tense at the top albeit it was in Chelsea's own hands if they won the title was theirs but if they didn't win there was still a way that Man City could creep in. Um, but Chelsea went and beat Reading 5-0 at home, comprehensive uh, victory, lifted the title, um, very much on for the quadruple, won the Conti Cup, um, still in for the FA Cup, won the league and they've got the Champions League final against Barcelona next week, so yeah, that's um, that would be a fantastic achievement by Emma Hayes and the girls down at Chelsea. There was also a potential three-way swing at the bottom of the table for the one relegation spot. Um, my team, Birmingham, as it stood Friday lunchtime, were safe bar, I think it was a 12 or 14 goal swing. But we uh, made an admin error a few weeks ago in fielding a player that was due for a suspension for so many yellow cards. And that saw us doctor point which put us straight back in there. So we went into yesterday's fixtures with Bristol City at the bottom on 12 points and Birmingham City and Aston Villa on 14 points. So, yeah, um, I felt nervously sick. I watched everything unfold yesterday afternoon. Birmingham lost 1-0 to a half-decent Tottenham Hotspur side. Um, Villa against... Against my odds and expectations, actually, they had Arsenal away and it was the Arsenal manager who's who's been successful over a number of years. It was his last game. So I that was the one cast stone result I called. I thought, you know, they're going to... Arsenal are going to sign off in style with him. They, you know, Villa will be lucky to not be on the end of a cricket score. But they held them 0-0. Um, got a very valuable point, which made things a bit tense from our point of view um, and Bristol's point of view. And I guess a lot of the, the, the battle with Bristol being on 12 and us being on 14 was Bristol had to win to even stand a chance. Um, albeit they were going to Brighton and Hove Albion, but Brighton weren't really playing for anything. And Bristol, at the tail end of the season, the Matt Beard, have been a good side. So I I kind of anticipated they might they might just go there and pull it off you know they might just go and get that victory, but um, alas it wasn't to be they lost three one so us losing and Villa drawing was irrelevant in the end it kept us up. Um, I mean Villa are, are very well run and I've every reason to believe they'll build upon the success of staying up this year with the the new TV revenue coming in and they. They will be a force. I don't think they'll be hitting like the, the top contention spots, but they'll be a force. They'll, they, they, they shouldn't be anywhere near the bottom next year, I wouldn't have thought. Um, and then you look at um, Bristol. I think, unfortunately, the championship, there's only one space to come up. So there's one relegation in the WSL, one coming up from the championship, and it's a very, very competitive division. Um, there's a few sides this year that... I've had a, a half decent year and we'll look to build on that next year. Um, you've got Liverpool who made the early running down there, although they, they fell off dramatically in the tail end of the season. They have a good WSL history. They spent a long time in the WSL previously, so they'll be looking to uh, 
have a lot better season, um, without a shadow of a doubt. And there's the strong rumours at the minute that, you know, Matt Beard was only interim at uh, Bristol, covering maternity cover for their manager. And I think had they stayed up, they might have approached him and said, you know, can you can you take it over? But um, I don't think he'll stay there now and he won't be short on job offers. And one of the strong early rumours are that he will be going back to his former club, Liverpool, where he won the WSL and had a lot of success. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I mean, I'm not a fan of, of people going back to the, the site of their former glories and possibly tarnishing their reputations. But if Liverpool get him, they will be a force next year. You know, they, they will be an absolute force, make no mistake about it. And second place in the Championship this year was Durham. Um, took it to within a few games with a very good Leicester side. So you'd expect them to push on again next year and, and not want to miss out next year. So, um, yeah, that's going to be quite interesting down there. As for my team, Birmingham, we were written off to be down in record time this season. Um, when Carla Wood came in last August, she only had eight players on the books. Um, there's all the well-documented off-pitch problems that I've spoken about before. Um, inadequate facilities, players writing an open letter to the board, um, and players paying for their own operations. A vast majority of our squad is loans um, so obviously when they all go back I've, and contracts run out I think I read somewhere we're down to three or four players on the books um, we couldn't field a side against Tottenham Hotspur earlier in the season so we sacrificed three points to them we were dot to point Friday um, everything that could go against us has gone against us and still we've held our heads above the water and and pulled it off somehow and that is a huge credit to Carla Ward and the staff there really um, we haven't won a home game all season we haven't um, won a game this calendar year and yeah it's, it's unbelievable you look at results like winning at Villa away <laughs> Um, the point against Villa with the last kick of the game you know unbelievable achievement and you'd like to think that now this money's coming into the game we can put those problems behind us and get back to being a force within the women's game that Birmingham were 8 or 10 years ago you know you're talking about a team that played women's European football that you know won, were in FA Cup finals were in the, the top regions of the division and we need to get back there. So he's hoping for a bright future. Uh, it's been a cracking WSL season. It's going to be phenomenal next year with the Sky and BBC takeover. Um, which will probably inevitably attract some massive names over here again from the women's game. And uh, yeah, I'm going to now attach on the end of the video a few of my favourite snaps that I've took in the WSL. Uh, albeit I only got with the agency and started covering WSL the, the last half of the season but next season we'll be doing a lot more all being well especially with restrictions being lifted so there'll be some more bangers coming next season but for now here's some of my best from this season please like the video subscribe to the channel comment what sort of content you want to see and I will speak to you soon